Hey, what's up guys, Stu Tall Toby here, and today we're gonna take a look at how to create this spring. We have a physical part, and we're gonna take photographs and measurements of this part and use that to create a 3D model in SolidWorks. This tutorial was totally inspired by the bridge section of the bass guitar, where we've got these different springs on the bridge section. And so if you want to learn how to create a bass guitar from start to finish, be sure to check out that tutorial that we've been live streaming every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Uh, of course, be sure to like and subscribe and if you feel like it, pick up a brand new Too Tall Toby t-shirt. They are the softest t-shirts in the CAD world. Ow! So what we've got here is a physical part, and because we have a physical part, we are able to take photographs of this part. And I've taken these photographs and I've actually included them right on my IMG UR. I'll include the link below. That way, if you wanna follow along with this tutorial, you can on your 3D CAD software. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start out by creating a new part here in millimeters and then I'm going to take some dimensions off of that physical part. And what I'm going to find is that the length of the spring here is just about 30 millimeters and I'm going to find that the diameter of the spring here is just about 10 millimeters and the spring thickness is about one millimeter in diameter. So 30 millimeters, 10 millimeters, one millimeter, very easy to remember, very easy to follow along with. I'm going to go to the front plane here and I'm going to create a rectangle with the dimensions 30 millimeters millimeters by 10 millimeters representing the diameter and the length of the spring. I'm going to center this lower line on the origin by using a midpoint relationship and I'm going to exit that sketch. Now since this part is round I can just take that sketch control C I can go to the right plane and control V to copy and paste the sketch and then all I need to do is edit that new sketch and add a midpoint relationship to the origin there as well. Now I've got two fully defined sketches one represents the layout from the front and one represents the layout from the side. And this will be very helpful when it comes time to bringing in our images. I'm gonna do a right mouse button on each of those sketches and go to sketch color, and I'm gonna change the sketch color to magenta for the front view, and I'm gonna change the sketch color to cyan for the right side view. Now, like I mentioned earlier, I've got these photographs here on my IMG UR, and one of these photographs is taken from the front view. And in this photograph, we can see that the spring begins right here and then wraps around kind of flat and then starts coming up at an angle after that first rotation. I've also got the image here from the right side view, and that same starting point has now been rotated about 90 degrees, so that starting view is now closer to this location, like I said, rotated about 90 degrees. So we've got a front view and a right side view of this part. Let's bring those into SolidWorks by going to the front plane, beginning a sketch, orienting the view, and then using the command tools, sketch tools, sketch picture. This will let us browse our hard drive and bring in a picture here from the front view. Now, once we bring this picture in, we can use this what's called scale tool. We can drag this magenta dot over here to one side. We can drag this little arrow over here to the other side. And SolidWorks says the current distance from the start to the end of that arrow is 106 millimeters. What should it be? And we're going to say that it should be 10 millimeters because that's the diameter of the spring. And so we can see that using that scale tool, SolidWorks was able to resize this or at least get us close. A lot of times I have to go over here to the property manager and uncheck this option for enable scale tool because I really want to just size it to my layout geometry. And sometimes that scale tool doesn't quite get it right. So we uncheck that option that allows us to drag the corners of that image. I'll touch on that a little more in just a moment. Finally, the last thing I do when I'm working with images is I go over here to transparency and I say I want the full image to have about 20% transparency. Just makes it a little bit easier to see through the photo so I can see what's going on behind the photo. All right, let's exit that sketch. That's gonna be our image from the front. And now we are gonna to go to the right side plane and basically rinse and repeat. So we'll select the plane, begin a sketch, orient our view, and then we're gonna to go to tools, sketch tools, sketch picture. And we're gonna drop in our side view on the right plane. Uh, like I mentioned a moment ago, sometimes I use this scale tool. Sometimes I just immediately uncheck the scale tool and then I just grab the corner here and resize it. If you don't uncheck that option, you're gonna get a warning that says you can't resize the image because you're using the scale tool. So we're gonna uncheck that option so that we can resize the image. Let's get this thing into place here, just like we did in the previous example, so that the uh, diameter and the height more or less match our layout geometry. I think that looks pretty good. Let's go to our full image here, make that transparency about 20% and exit that sketch. And we can rename that sketch to image side. 
All right, four features in the tree, our two layouts and our two images, and everything so far is looking pretty good. So let's return to the front view now and create the sketch plane for our helix. And we're gonna do this by selecting the top plane, and then we're gonna grab the plane here by getting this four-way arrow. You see, if you don't see the four-way arrow, this isn't gonna work if you're up here or down here. You want the four-way arrow. Then we're gonna hold control and we're gonna drag that plane up. We're gonna let go of everything, and then we're gonna type in the distance of 0 0.5. That's our one millimeter spring uh, uh, wire diameter divided by two. So one half of that, that uh, wire diameter thickness. And that's gonna be our starting plane for the helix. We'll select that plane, begin a sketch, and we'll sketch a circle there with a diameter of not 10 millimeters, but 10 millimeters minus the wire thickness. Uh, really minus one half the wire thickness times two, but minus the wire thickness will do for this example. So uh, we're gonna make that nine millimeters in diameter on that plane that is half a millimeter up. And then we are gonna go to the command features, curves, helix, and spiral. And this is going to allow us to create a helix directly on our model. Now, this helix looks okay, but obviously the pitch is not correct. And that is very obvious because we're working with a photograph. And so we could edit that helix feature and we could increase that pitch until we get something that's a little bit closer to the photograph. Hmm. Three millimeters, that looks like it's pretty close there. I can hit the green check mark and take a look at my results. But the problem here is that this is a constant uh, pitch helix. So although it is starting in the correct location and uh, you know more or less going around in the correct direction, uh, the problem is that in the actual physical spring, it kind of starts out with a tighter pitch. So in other words, the bottom of the spring is almost set up so that it can sit flat on a table because it's got that tighter pitch. And then that pitch increases over time. That's what's called a very variable pitch helix. So if we return to the front view and we edit that helix spiral, so we can say edit feature here, we can change to a variable pitch helix, variable pitch. So over here in the uh, helix definition, we're gonna use this lower option here, variable pitch. I think you're also gonna find the most success if you change this option here to pitch and revolution, pitch and revolution. I think that's gonna make it a, a lot easier for us to kind of iteratively work through this this process because it's going to be a lot of trial and error we're going to be working with the photograph and seeing what we can get from the photograph but i think that what we want to do at first is make this pitch very small like 0 0.2 millimeters or 0 0.1 millimeters and we want to make our revolution from the beginning to the uh, second pass here something very small as well like maybe half of a revolution so if we go from uh, zero revolutions to 0 0.5 revolutions or one half revolution, we're only going to increase the pitch by 0 0.2 millimeters. So it's essentially going to look like it is flat as we go around that first one half pass. So you can see here, we start here, we go around 180 degrees, and it's almost flat. You want to take that number down as low as you can go, but when you get to a certain distance, you're going to start getting warnings saying, please adjust the revolution or pitch value. Uh, you're, you're, you're not small, or you're, you're too small, uh, and SolidWorks isn't going to let you do it. So I find that 0 0.2 is kind of a good place to start for that pitch, at least for this example. Let's return to our front view and uh, let's continue on here and say that now as we move from say uh, our 0 0.5, so our half a revolution to three quarters of a revolution, so from 180 degrees to 270 degrees, let's increase that pitch and uh, let's increase it to one millimeter. See what that looks like. Well. Now we can really start using the photograph here and really where we want this point to be is right at the middle. So maybe we need to increase that 1.5 or maybe even two millimeters. Let's see what that looks like. I think that looks pretty close to right in the center of that spring wire. And this is where working with photos can really start to pay off um, because you can, you can use those photos to get you pretty close, pretty darn close to the uh, real world example when you're working with those photos. So let's say now that our, uh, our next revolution, our next uh, milestone here is going to be at 360 degrees or one full revolution. So zero degrees, 180 degrees, 270 degrees, and now 360 degrees. And so we want this to be right at the center of the wire in the photograph here. Let's see what we can do to get it there. Let's go maybe to three millimeters worth of pitch. Hmm, that looks pretty close. Maybe just a little bit more. Let's go 3.1, I hardly did anything. 3.3, that looks pretty good. We could maybe even go a little further than that, but let's stick with 3.3 for now. So now as we, as we transition from uh, 
270 degrees to 360 degrees or 0.75 revolutions to one revolution, we are increasing our pitch from two to 3.3. And that is a, a variable transition. It's a gradual transition. It's not, it doesn't immediately hop. So everything in between 270 degrees and uh, 360 degrees is going to gradually increase from two uh, millimeters worth of pitch to 3.3 millimeters worth of pitch. So now let's continue working our way up the spring. Let's say that as we go from our first full revolution to our second full revolution, that we want that pitch to remain at 3.3. Let's see what that looks like. It looks like we're coming up a little bit short there. Maybe we could uh, increase that to like 3.5. That's looking pretty close there. I think I could probably live with that. Maybe I could even go a little bit further. Let's say like 3.7. Oh yeah, that looks great there. That's like right in the center. So now let's say that we want to lock that in. We want to go from revolution number two to revolution number seven. And we want that all to be 3.7 millimeters. Ooh, that looks, looks close, but maybe we're a little bit on the heavy side there. Let's dial back down to 3.5. So again, I'm using uh, or I'm using tab and shift tab here to help navigate. Let's make that 3.5 and navigate down to that next field 3.5 as well. Okay, a little bit short now. How about 3.6? Kind of split the difference. 3.6. Oh yeah, I think we could work with that. 3.6 gets us. Look at that. It's going right through the center of that spring all the way up to that point. So I think that's pretty good. So 3.6, 3.6, all the way up to seven revolutions. And you know what? When I look at this thing in the in the physical model, what I find is that it, start, it starts and ends about 180 degrees off from one another. So the uh, start is here on uh, the mouse cam. It's on the right side, and the end is over on the left side. So since it starts 180 degrees off, maybe I'll actually just take that to 6.5. 6.5 revolutions. Uh, and that should set me up to now basically mirror what we did up top here. And what I mean by that is uh, if we look at this chart here, now what I want to do is I want to start reversing uh, everything that I did from here down. So you can think of this uh, 6.5 as the almost dead center of the chart. And so now I want to create the inverse properties for the remainder of that chart. So uh, after I get to that 6.5, now I'm going to say that I want to go to, uh, uh, say, one additional uh, revolution here. So from 6.5 to, say, uh, 7.5. This is kind of like the difference between the 2 and the 1 here. So from the 6.5 to the 7.5, which is the same as the difference from the, the 2 to the 1 here, I want that to remain at 3.6 millimeters. And now from uh, 7.5 to 8.5, I want to take on this property here of 3.3 millimeters of pitch. And then when I go to that 8.5, uh, down to the the next milestone, which in this case would be kind of like going from 1 to 0 0.75. So that's going to be going an additional 0 0.25. So 8 to 8.75, sorry, 8.5 to 8.75. What I want is for that to mirror that 2 millimeter uh, uh, pitch setting. So this is the, the 2 millimeter pitch setting here. And then from 0 0.75 to 0 0.5, so that's going to be an additional 0 0.25. I'm going to come down to 0 0.2. So from 8 to 9, I'm going to come down to 0 0.2 for the pitch. And then finally, from 0 0.5 to 0 is 0 0.2. So that means that from 9 to 9.5, I want there to be 0 0.2 millimeters worth of pitch. And that should give me a pretty good uh, symmetric relationship between the start and the end of the helix. And looking at the photo here, it looks like I'm pretty much staying centered in the spring the entire time. I'm pretty much ending up right at the top. So this is all great feedback that we're able to gather from working with a photograph. Now, in newer versions of SolidWorks, at this point, you could just select the Helix Spiral and jump into Sweep, and you could use the option for a circular sweep profile. Since I'm using an older version, SolidWorks 2015, my favorite version, uh, I need to manually create that sweep profile plane and the sweep profile. So I will press the S key, go to Reference Geometry Plane, I'll pick the Helix here, I'll pick the endpoint of that Helix, I'll hit the green check mark, 
That allows me to create a plane there. I'm going to select that plane, begin a sketch. I'm going to create a, cir a circle here with a diameter of one millimeter for the spring wire. Pick the center of that circle, hold control, pick the helix, and use the option for pierce. And then finally, I'm going to exit that sketch, select the helix, select that circle, go to sweep, and I'm going to sweep that circle along that path. And that gives me the solid geometry for that variable pitch helix. I think that looks pretty good. If we were to change to wireframe, what we would see is that we're basically following exactly with that photograph, which is what we want. That's the whole reason that we're using photographs to help the process. We're making sure that we're following right along with that photograph. If we were to uh, change it over to our right side view, we would see basically the same thing. We're following right along with that photograph, following right up that right side view. So this is an excellent result here if we change to wireframe. You know, maybe it's a it gets a little bit off here as we get closer to the top of the uh, of the image. Um, you can kind of account that to maybe a deformation in the photograph when you were taking the photograph, or uh, you know, when when we rolled it over, we might not have rolled it over exactly to 90 degrees. But what we're really looking for here is for the most part this. Thing is following right along with that photograph. That's really an excellent result, and that's definitely the result that we want when we're working with photographs. And so we can change this back to a solid view. We can hide all of our images and our planes here. We don't need to see any of that geometry anymore. We can hide our, our sketches from earlier. We don't need to see that geometry. We could maybe assign a material to this thing to get it to look nice and shiny. And I think that's a pretty darn good result from our spring using the variable pitch option, using photographs, and ending up with a nice, solid result. Guys, if you're happy with these results, be sure to like, be sure to subscribe. Uh, check out the bass guitar tutorial video series where we teach you how to build a bass guitar from start to finish. And of course, be sure to, to pick up one of these Two Tall Toby t-shirts, the softest t-shirts in the cat industry. Uh, these shirts are very, very soft and very comfortable, and I personally wear mine every day. I'll catch you guys in the next tutorial. See ya.